welcome to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. And now, your host, Tim Johnson. Louisiana has recognized unprecedented economic development success over the last few years. It seems that almost every day we see an announcement of new investment and new jobs coming to our state. Filling these new jobs with Louisiana talent and Louisiana citizens is critical. Louisiana Economic Development is launching Louisiana Job Connection to help meet the talent recruitment needs of Louisiana employers while serving as a centralized hub for job seekers. We'll talk about Louisiana Job Connection and much more when LED Secretary Stephen Moray joins us on the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. Founded in 1984, Bic Alliance and its subsidiaries connect business and industry buyers and suppliers with one another for the betterment of all. BIC helps companies grow in three ways. Aggressive sales and marketing campaigns in BIC Magazine, finding the right people through BIC Recruiting, and by merger and acquisition and related services through IVS Investment Banking. Contact BIC Alliance today. The funny thing about Louisiana is that people don't often ask you why you moved home. They just accept it as the most natural thing in the world. Because of course I would want to move back home and be near my tribe, be in this beautiful landscape. It just inspires me. Whether it's a golden marshland, an expanse of sugarcane fields, a sunset through a cypress swamp, the outdoors here really are like nowhere else. You can start your day off paddling at Lake Martin, finish it off with music at the Blue Moon. I came home for my dream job but also because I believe in Louisiana and where it's going. We're building a world-class central park in Louisiana, planned by the members of this community. And I just bought my dream home, a sustainable house designed and built by the architecture students here at the university. My electricity bill was $30 last month. The life I thought I would have in Austin is actually happening right here in Louisiana. I'm E.B. Brooks. I have the job I want, in the place I love. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the soccer star to the soccer mom. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Insurance commercials have become unusually funny. We think that's strange because we take auto coverage pretty seriously at Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Of course, when you cover as many vehicles in Louisiana as we do, it doesn't leave a lot of time for silly gimmicks. We're more concerned about what happens to you on the road than any chickens that happen to cross it just to make you chuckle. Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. I'm pleased to be joined by my good friend Stephen Moray, Secretary of Louisiana Economic Development. You were the first guy to repeat on our radio show. <laughs> now you're the first guest to repeat on our television show, so I appreciate you being here, Frank. Well, Tim, it's great to be here. It's an honor to be here, and I want to congratulate you on all the success you've been having with the show. People are talking about it more and more. We've been, it's been fun. We, we've had a good time with it and, and hopefully we've put a, a good product out there, something that's informative and is helping the business community. But let's talk about Louisiana's economy because uh, you, you can't pick up a newspaper, you can't read, you can't watch the, the news where we don't hear something about the progress that we've made. So give us a quick snapshot overview of the state of Louisiana's economy and talk specifically about how we compare to the rest of the country. Well, you know, the most exciting thing right now is that we're kind of in the, the calm before the storm, but a good storm. Uh, the news came out earlier this week that Louisiana had the biggest year in the country last year for actual levels of industrial construction activity, and we're not even in the busy phase yet. So it really hasn't it's gotten kind of started amazing yet. To think right. about right. being number one, and really the biggest projects haven't yet uh, kicked off. But, you know, we, we started off uh, in this administration right at the beginning of the Great Recession, 
uh, January 2008, just a couple weeks after the official start. And if you go from that point to today, Louisiana's private sector job growth ranks second best in the South, sixth best in the country overall. We have the second uh, uh, lowest unemployment rate in the South today. Our population overall has grown about 15% faster than the U.S. over the last six-year period, six years in a row of population and migration. Um, but most significantly is what's happening uh, right now in terms of new investment in Louisiana, new projects on the way in Louisiana. Uh, obviously, the biggest sector being the manufacturing sector, where we've got uh, something on the order of 60 to $80 billion worth of new projects, uh, only a small portion of which is actually broken ground. Uh, we're going to see a lot of new activity over the next 24 months, uh, not just uh, projects we've announced before breaking ground, but new projects getting announced in Louisiana. Uh, we're seeing a skyrocketing level of interest of uh, foreign direct investment from companies around the world, most recently the Big China announcement, uh, but we're pursuing projects in Japan and Taiwan and Korea, Germany, India, Canada, the UK. Um, Louisiana uh, is, is garnering interest from all over the world today, uh, and it's a very exciting time. So we've, we've outperformed the country during a really a downturn nationally, but um, what we're going to experience the next few years I think is going to be very healthy job growth and historic levels of investment in our state. As you and I have conversations regularly offline, you talk about, you know, you, you've said to me before, if you think the, the last couple of years have been good, wait till you see what's coming. And so I know how exciting it is. So if you look at that on the surface, it might be easy to say that Louisiana has been fortunate. Low natural gas prices are driving a lot of the, uh, the, the investment in the, in the petrochemical uh, mm -hmm. sector particularly. But if you, if you pay attention to what's going on, Stephen, you know that that's not the only story, right? That there's been a great focus on economic development in our state. There's been a great focus on our regulatory environment, our tax environment, uh, ethics in our state. So let's talk about the process of economic development because it doesn't just happen that natural gas prices are low because of enhanced oil recovery and all of a sudden everybody wants to come here. It's more than that, isn't it? It is more than that. I, I do think it's important to acknowledge that um, certainly the biggest single uh, piece of good fortune that we're experiencing right now is low stable natural gas prices. But the thing sometimes folks forget is the entire country is experiencing low That's stable right. natural gas prices. So what's really happened is that this shale gas revolution in the United States has unleashed uh, an unprecedented level of new investment that really uh, sort of wants to happen in the United States because of those economics. That doesn't mean those projects have, it, have to happen in Louisiana. Uh, for a variety of, of logistics reasons and so forth, we tend to be one of a relatively small number of states that's going to compete for most of that investment, uh, and it will ultimately be in the hundreds of billions, not in Louisiana, but nationally. Uh, I anticipate we will get the majority of it uh, in total. Uh, our, our most significant competitor is certainly Texas. Uh, but we, uh, at least in the energy and petrochem sector, but we do compete regularly with Alabama and Mississippi, uh, a number of states along the East Coast uh, as well. But as you look at what's happening in this sort of energy and petrochem sector, it may be the biggest single sector, and is the biggest single sector in terms of new capital investment. But if you kind of put that aside for the moment, the other thing that's really ha exciting to me that's happening in Louisiana is we're starting to attract a much greater diversity of projects. In fact, the fastest growing industry in Louisiana today is not the petrochem energy, not even energy, it's software development. Exactly. Software development is literally the fastest growing industry in Louisiana. Uh, digital media and software jobs in our state have jumped, and I'm talking about field jobs, not, not just announcements, have grown 25% grown from January 2008 to today, and that's before all these projects like IBM and CGI and CSC and EA complete their ramp ups. I mean, we have another several thousand jobs worth of projects that are already announced that are ramping up mostly over the next three years. We have several more uh, in the pipeline as well. What's helping us to compete? Uh, we, we certainly owe a debt of gratitude to the governor and the legislature for many of the things that they've done in creating a more competitive business climate from a business tax perspective, from a governmental ethics perspective, uh, and also from uh, investments we've made in programs like Fast Start that have really allowed us to take workforce from something that used to be a top concern that companies had about investing in Louisiana and turn it into our top selling point. We've got about a minute and a half left in this segment, and you mentioned this IT sector, this software development sector. And you mentioned, By the way, natural gas really doesn't mean a lot to them. Really doesn't right, mean sorry. a lot to, to them, right? So, so it, it's further evidence of the things that we're getting right, right. Uh, in order to make things happen from an economic development perspective. In about 30 seconds, 
How big is the IBM uh, project for the state of Louisiana? I know all of these projects are meaningful, but the investment that IBM is making here and the relationship with LSU, give us 30 seconds on your perspective there. It's a huge opportunity, and it's an opportunity that really helped us build momentum that was already starting. So since IBM, we announced another project the same size, another Fortune 500 IT company called CSC that's opening an 800 job software and cybersecurity center in Bossier. And then in Lafayette, CGI, one of the biggest independent IT companies in the world, opening a 400 job uh, studio there. We have several more big projects in process. So we're on a great run. This whole IT and software development sector, we're in the very early stages of what could be a major new growth industry for Louisiana. It's gonna be fun to watch. We're gonna take a break. We come back, I wanna talk about some of these more recent petrochemical announcements that we've seen because we, you know, they keep coming, sizable type uh, projects that are going to be great for our state. We're visiting with Secretary Stephen Moray of Louisiana Economic Development, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox 4. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. Big Media Solutions is a marketing and communication, media advisory and event planning company within Big Alliance. Big Media Solutions offers custom book publishing, event planning, and keynote speaking to its clients in the business and industrial sector and marketing partnerships to others in publishing. Big Alliance is your business and industry connection. Contact Big Alliance today. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Hello, I'm Eric Edwards with the Livingston Parish Convention and Visitor Bureau. Find out now what's going on in Livingston Parish. We have over 400 nautical miles of waterways. Tee it up at our great world-renowned golf courses. Shop at our antique districts, or come to Bass Pro, our number one retailer. There's a lot to do in Livingston Parish that you never imagined. It's all happening right here in Livingston Parish. For more information, go online at visitlivingstonparish.com. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. A great conversation, conversation with LED Secretary Stephen Morey. Stephen, we, we talked about how Louisiana uh, ranks relative to the rest of the country and how mm -hmm. vibrant our economy has been and how well it's performed even during the uh, economic downturn that we've mm -hmm. seen all across the country and how exciting all of these announcements are that we see. One of the big ones that we just saw within the last couple of weeks is an announcement of a, of a Chinese Mm -hmm. uh, manufacturer coming to St. James Parish, Yuang Chemical, a $1.85 billion methanol plant just outside of Vashery. Uh, and I was on the radio a, a couple of days ago talking about this project on the morning show on 107.3 in Baton Rouge, and they asked me the question, and I said, you know, it's a direct result of a very targeted effort that LED and local economic developers have pursued that's called FDI, Foreign Direct mm -hmm. Investment. So let's talk a little bit about that process and uh, the results that we see now with this, this big announcement from this Chinese chemical Yeah, plant. absolutely. Well, you know, Louisiana has had a significant amount of foreign direct investment for many years, um, but we really saw an opportunity a few years ago uh, when natural gas prices came down, we realized the opportunity was going to be not just to attract major domestic companies, but major foreign uh, companies as well. And not just in the uh, energy and petrochem sector, but also in, in steel production and automotive and uh, uh, machinery manufacturing. And so over the last, uh, I'd say roughly three years, we've built up a much stronger uh, outbound uh, foreign direct investment attraction effort uh, with a big focus uh, on a Asia in particular, uh, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, China, uh, also India. Uh, we also are continuing a long-term focus the state has had in, in Europe, particularly uh, Germany uh, and France and the UK. 
Uh, you've also got, uh, to some extent, a focus uh, in Canada. Um, a lot of opportunities uh, around the world. Um, we've been doing uh, business development uh, missions to those regions. Uh, in fact, I think all the ones that I've mentioned with the, actually including India, we've done. Um, we've also looked at, you know, what are the biggest opportunities in, in each country? So we're, we're very targeted about both sectors as well as the companies that we, we cultivate uh, to bring to Louisiana. Um, a lot, they sometimes have unique issues. They have expats that may uh, be uh, uh, relocating here from other places around the world. They want to know what types of schools are available. They want to know that cultural things that relate to, you know, their sort of home country are available here. So there's a lot of sort of extra things that we do for companies that are investing in the United States for the first time, or at least in Louisiana for the first time, that we might not have to do uh, for a domestic company. Uh, it's a very, very competitive space. Um, you've got states like Texas and Georgia, Virginia, Florida that are in that space in a very, very competitive way. Uh, but fortunately, we've got a great story to tell, particularly against Texas, which tends to be our biggest competitor on these big manufacturing projects. I like to beat Texas. I like to beat Alabama in anything that we can do. Now, you, you mentioned this foreign direct investment. Is the Bentler Steel project up in northwest Louisiana, is that a result of some of those efforts it as well? Give, give us an idea um, of what's going on there. That was, uh, you know, multiple trips uh, to see them in Germany. Uh, great project, one of the biggest steel companies in the world. Uh, also a major company in the automotive sector as a tier one supplier. They uh, are building, uh, it's actually going to be all right at a billion dollars uh, steel mill and uh, steel pipe mill uh, at the port of Cato Bossier, the biggest possible project you could fit on the last piece of land that they had. Uh, their local folks did a fantastic job there. Uh, can't say enough good things about uh, the port and Eric and their leadership that they've provided uh, locally. Um, that's going to be about 675 direct jobs, $50,000 average salary plus benefits across two phases. Um, we're also building in partnership with the local community uh, and Jim Henderson, who's providing great leadership at Bowser Parish Community College, Paris community College uh, right. a new uh, advanced manufacturing training center there, roughly $22 million or so, including equipment and, and construction. Uh, one of the senior executives with Benchler recently visited that facility, uh, and his quote was that it was the finest training facility he had seen in the United States. So we're really excited about that. Initially, we'll be focused on Bentler's needs, but once Bentler completes ramping up, um, other companies will be able to take advantage of that as well. Well, you mentioned a couple of things that I might want to pursue. We've got about two minutes left in this segment, but I want to hit on something that you mentioned, the local effort that, that was engaged with you from the state's perspective to bring a project like that to northwest Louisiana. And we see that collaboration all across our state. You know, you think about the folks at GNO Inc., Michael Hecht, and the close relationship you have there, Adam Knapp and Ian Vasey and the regional team here with the local chambers, uh, you know, George Swift, and, and, and you think about Greg Gotro over in Lafayette and some of the great announcements you guys have made there. How critical is the working relationship between LED at the state level and these regional economic developers? Oh, it's hugely important. And in fact, um, any, really, truly, any major project, if you think about an IBM, a Bentler, a Nucor, an EA, uh, almost 100% of the time, these are very strong partnerships that involve several different parties. Uh, in fact, typically, you can envision uh, at the state level, not just LED, but the Department of Environmental Quality, often the Department of Transportation and Development, always the Office the of the Governor. Workforce Commission. The Workforce right. Commission, very frequently, fast start. Um, at the local and regional level, in addition to regional groups like the Baton Rouge Area Chamber or GNO Inc. or the North Louisiana Economic Partnership, uh, you've also got local economic development groups like the Ascension Economic Development Corporation or uh, uh, JEDCO in Jefferson Parish. But also um, the local uh, mayors play a very important role. Often the local educational leaders, either at the community technical college level, the university level, sometimes both, uh, often uh, superintendents of public schools as companies are very interested in that particular dimension. Um, so there really are usually at least a half dozen different partners that play a key role in bringing those major projects together. And one of the things that those companies like to see, and I give great credit to all these folks in Louisiana that have helped make this happen, is they like to see coordinated partnership where everybody is working together to do their part, uh, just focused on how do we make this a great environment, a great uh, solution for this particular company, this particular project. Uh, Louisiana, I think at both the state level and the local level and regional level has gotten really good at that and it's been a part of a big part of our success the last few years. I don't think there's any question about that and it's one of the things that's been really uh, gratifying for me to watch how, how well we've worked together in, in the collaboration. 
Now, if we're going to prepare or, and, and bring this investment in these jobs here, we want to make sure we prepare Louisiana citizens to, to be eligible to, to take advantage of those jobs. So when we come back from the break, I want to talk about Louisiana Job Connection. We're visiting with Secretary Stephen Moray of LED, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox 4. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College. Do you want a better life? Get your associate's degree in occupational studies in information technology from ITI. In two years, you'll be on your way to a better life. You will get hands-on specialized training in computers, hardware and software, networking, and more. ITI offers flexible class schedules, and financial aid is available to those who qualify. So don't wait. Call ITI now or go online. It's that simple. ITI for a better life. The funny thing about Louisiana is that people don't often ask you why you moved home. They just accept it as the most natural thing in the world. Because of course I would want to move back home and be near my tribe, be in this beautiful landscape. It just inspires me. Whether it's a golden marshland, an expanse of sugarcane fields, a sunset through a cypress swamp, the outdoors here really are like nowhere else. You can start your day off paddling at Lake Martin, finish it off with music at the Blue Moon. I came home for my dream job, but also because I believe in Louisiana and where it's going. We're building a world-class central park in Louisiana, planned by the members of this community. And I just bought my dream home, a sustainable house designed and built by the architecture students here at the university. My electricity bill was $30 last month. The life I thought I would have in Austin is actually happening right here in Louisiana. I'm E.B. Brooks. I have the job I want and the place I love. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. Great uh, conversation with Secretary Stephen Moray of Louisiana Economic Development. Stephen, we've got all these jobs coming here now, right? And, and so <clears throat> what, all the investment and, and all the announcements don't mean a lot if we're not employing Louisiana citizens. That, in, the bo in the final analysis, that's really what it's all about. That's right. And so there are two things that you think about there. Number one, we've got to prepare them for the jobs. We've got to have training programs, education programs, degree programs that specifically target those demand occupations. And then we've got to be able to connect them to the job. So we're going to talk about the connection piece and, and Louisiana job connection in just a few minutes. But we spent a lot of time on this show over the last few months talking about the WISE plan. And that's workforce and innovation for a stronger economy. It's, a, it's, it's dollars that have been set aside for uh, institutions of higher education in our state who do a good job preparing individuals for these available high demand jobs. So talk about your perspective on WISE a little bit and then we'll jump into Louisiana Job Connection. Well I'm excited about the WISE program. Um, the reality is we find ourselves in a very fortunate position and that is that for some high demand fields we literally are going to have more uh, new jobs than we have at least today the skilled uh, talent to be able to take those jobs. So there's a gap as we call it and the WISE program is all about closing that gap. Think about uh, at the four-year level things like engineering fields, computer science, accounting, finance. We need thousands more of those fields. Um, at the LCTCS level, manufacturing operations like CNC operators and machinists or uh, industrial craft trades, the biggest single sector, things mm -hmm. like electricians and welders and pipe fitters and so forth. Um, we need lots more of all these different fields and a good number of others to be able to keep up with demand of what's coming. And so what the WISE Fund is going to do is to really direct uh, $40 million, the vast, a small portion of that will go to research, the vast majority will be focused on meeting uh, those needs, funding those programs uh, at the local level across the state. I think it's going to make a big difference in both helping us uh, secure all those jobs, but also helping ensure that Louisiana citizens can get the jobs. We want them to have the access to it. Now, one of the things <clears throat> you guys have done is create this Louisiana job connection. Um, and so it, it really is to help connect uh, job seekers to job providers, right? And uh, uh, give us a little overview of what Louisiana Job Connection looks like and what it's intended to do. 
Well, it's a, it's a really exciting project, Tim. I, I'm just incredibly excited about it. When you think about the, the job search process, it is really inefficient. Uh, if you're a, a job seeker, you've got this special, unique set of skills and experience and formal academic training. You're trying to find a job that can maximize the utilization and the value of those skills. If you're an employer, you're trying to find someone who has the skills that you need to fill your particular jobs. The challenge is how do those two people uh, come together? And we took the idea of a matchmaking site. If you think about Match.com. Uh, that's there are a hundred of those sites. There are a number, yeah. number of those sites. I, I've been married for a long time, so I'm not as close <laughs> to them now. But, um, but the basic idea is to take all the complexity out, to take all the time out. And rather than have people search through all these job boards and have companies search through hundreds of resumes, many of which may or may not fit for what their needs are, we're creating um, a really robust uh, technology platform. It'll be presented as a website, but there's a lot of technology behind it that has an algorithm that basically matches job seekers and employers based on those specific skills the employers need, the job seekers have to offer. There's no searching, really. Basically, you input what you're interested in, what your skill set is, the companies do the same, and this algorithm uh, presents the results. It makes the connection. It's right? powerful, and companies across the state, leading companies in multiple industries, are raving about it. They've actually helped us design it. Well, that was my next question. I think you're set to go live on August 18th. As That's I right. Understand. It's live Somewhere. to employers now. It'll be live to job seekers on August 18th. What, right. what do job seekers need to do to get prepared for the launch? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, when you go to the website, if you've already got a LinkedIn page, you can just link to that, and it connects automatically. Uh, or you can customize it from scratch or, or modify the LinkedIn information as it comes in. Um, you can control, uh, there's a, v a variety of privacy settings, for example. If you know, you may, many people are employed now, they want to know what else is out there. They don't necessarily want their employer to know they're looking for a job or open other jobs. There's ways you can control those settings to keep yourself private until you want to actually apply for something. Um, it's a really, really, it's not just powerful, but it's very easy to use, both for the job seekers and for the employers. Um, we've gotten input from many, many companies and from many um, potential job seekers about the design and the approach, and we think what we're going to offer is really, really compelling. Uh, how, do, how do you access it? What is the It's what is on. The website? Uh, it's accessed through a website. It's free. It's called uh, Louisiana Job Connection, and it's www.louisianajobconnection.com. Dot com. Now, we've got about 30 seconds left. You showed me before the show started today some beautiful television spots that you guys are running, and I think we've actually <coughs> run one on the show tonight. Give us 20 seconds on what we can expect to see there as you hope to, to attract some of these expats back Sure. Home, right? Part of what we're going to be launching probably in September uh, is a Come Home Louisiana campaign. We have some fields. We need so many people. We literally won't be able to produce enough if we just focus in the States. So we want to get some of these people left Louisiana to come back. We're profiling people who grew up here, went off to New York or Austin or Dallas and decided to come home. They are beautiful spots, mm -hmm. and I know our audience will look forward to seeing them. Secretary Stephen Moore, thanks always again for being with us, Thanks buddy. for having me. That's a wrap, guys. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next week at this very same time for another edition of the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox 4.